and college grads have got a uh, overinflated view of what they could make and should make. Is that, mm. is that a fair way of saying that? That's a very fair way. And you get some more data on your hands. Yeah, this is pretty wild. As hiring demands increase, this is from CNBC.com, the average starting salary for the class of 2022 is projected to be more than 50000 Okay, checks out. However, current college students expect to earn twice that, $103,880 in their first job, according to one report. Yeah. That's a problem. It is a problem. It's not realistic. The market's not there. The question is, and I've not seen any of these articles that, that offer an opinion as to why. I think I have an opinion, but what say you? Um, I interviewed a bunch of high schoolers, and when I talked to them, they all were like, well, yeah, I'm going to make a, I'm gonna make six figures when I graduate. And I was like, what makes you th- think right, that? Right. There's no reality. It's just kind of this wet finger in the air, and I think I deserve, and the the way things are going with the economy, you need to make a hundred thousand. So yeah. I'm just gonna go make a hundred thousand. Yeah. And so here's what's dangerous about this. And if you are one of these young people and you're listening and watch this, we have a lot, listen, we're not bashing you right now. I don't want you to hear here's Ken and George, the old cranky guys like the Muppets, those two Muppet guys that sat in the top, you know. The balcony. Um yeah. I love those, those guys. guys. Here's the deal. Here's here's why I want you to really do your homework on what the jobs are offer I and mean, what what you're gonna look at, and George just gave you the number. Because when you have unrealistic expectations, George, you are going to have unmet expectations. Ooh. And so that starts you off right out of the gate with a certain amount of resentment. Yeah, and cynicism. And frustration and everything that comes with that. And so this is interesting. So the number is they're expected to start at, you said it was 55? Well, they're expected to start at over just over 50. Oh, just over 50,000. Okay. But their expectations are that well, they're going to yeah. make... 103 plus yeah. and it says 10 years into the careers students anticipate making more than two hundred thousand dollars yeah well so they are way overestimating their starting salaries one report says by 88 percent and so they need to understand what degree am i after what are the jobs on the other side of that degree and what do those jobs pay in my area with my yeah. experience all right so now are I those want... the steps to take yeah i agree and and so we want to know okay what does it look like they've got to know the industry and then more importantly Young people, listen, go hang out with women and men who are winning in your industry and then say, hey, if I'm going to make or if I if I want to make two hundred thousand dollars in 10 years, what would need to be true? Like, let's just get some real coffee and some real knowledge so that you have an idea of what 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 you need to expect. Now, I want to flip this for a second in my hands here. I've got an article. Uh, I like that. I bring my own I bring my own paper. I bring my own sound effects. And uh, this is an op-ed uh, uh, on Fox News, but listen to this. The world is changing as it relates to college degree and professional success. Now, George, you know this. I talk about this all the time ad nauseum next to your desk. And, and I, like, it makes me nauseous. Yeah, it does. I talk about it too much. I'm very passionate about it. But the, level, the leveling of the playing field is here, and it's good for people who don't have a degree. Now, there are people that are listening and watching to us right now that they feel stuck because they, they don't want to go get another degree because either they want to pivot and they feel like they need that qualification or they uh, don't want to stay in the same field that they're in with the degree they have and they think, oh, I need a degree. Maybe not. But here's how it's changing. The headline here is employers are wising up. Between 2007 and 2019, George, the share of job postings requiring a four-year degree rose more than 60%. Wow. They called it degree inflation. So it was a little bit of a monkey see, monkey do. Everybody's doing it. We don't want to be the ones that aren't doing it. And we feel like, well, we're going to get the riffraff. We filter the riffraff out because if you don't have a degree, you're not as good as somebody else. And I'm being honest. I'm not trying to sure. play on some populism here. Well, it's kind of like the credit score. It's just an easy way to go. We're too lazy to look into their finances. The credit great score call. tells us. It's a great box call, we're going to check. George. Great call. So that the degree and the credit score have become somewhat of the same thing. It's a measuring tool, but does it actually matter? We know it doesn't. You, got, you bought a house without a credit score. That's right. And we teach this all the time. All right, so real quick, though, here's what's interesting. In 1990, this is the same time that, that we, we begin to see uh, a real difference in prime age workers who are earning between sixty dollars and $80,000 a year. All right, so 38% earning between sixty dollars and $80,000 a, a year had a bachelor's degree. Okay? Today, the proportion is 52%. So it's about degree, degree, degree. But listen to this. Four in 10 recent college grads work in jobs that have not traditionally required a college degree. And in that case, the college graduates 
in non-college degree requirement jobs are earning more than $10,000 less. In other words, the way they write that's confusing. Sure. If you have a college saying. degree, you're making over $10,000 less than your compadres who have no degree. Wow. So all that to say, two questions that I teach for our new audience members. If you've never heard me say this before, there's two questions you can ask. Is a degree the only way to get the job I want, or is it the best way? Now, you got to dig, but the research is readily available, George. It's not a mystery. No. And if the answer is no to questions. either one, here's the great news. There's more and more jobs coming online. You have state governments. I didn't mention this. 11 states now have removed college degree requirements for you to get a job in their executive branch. That's 11 amazing. governors said, we're changing it. So I just think this is a trend. It's that a is great not shift. Stopping. I'm very happy about this shift. And the truth is, anecdotally, as we take calls on the show, the folks that have degrees, they call in and they go, I'm making 40 grand and I'm 100,000 in debt. Yep. The folks that don't have degrees, they call in and they go, Well, I'm 19 and I make 80 grand as a welder and I have no debt. That's right. And I go, Who would you rather be? Yeah. And guess who's not desperate for the raise and yep. not struggling and anxious in their job? Yep. The guy who has no debt who's making 80 grand with no college degree. Yep. So I'm just tired of this system that's pushed all of these kids through to focus on a degree without thinking about what's on the other side. Well, let's not forget that we pushed them into this. They were told it was the right way to do it. And then they come out of school and the debt payments are killing them. They don't feel like they're ever going to climb out of the hole of the student loan. And then a politician comes along Ugh. and they promise that we're going to wipe away $20,000 worth of your loan. And they hold on tight for years for years. And then you find out that some judges wearing black robes said, nope, can't do it. And they're left holding the bag. Mm. And that stinks. And so look at look out, look out at, at the future. Look at the now and go, wait a second. Do I need a degree? And if we look at the technology field alone, George, just the technology field, there are so many what I would call technology trade schools. Bethel Tech, BethelTech.net, tell them I sent you. I endorse them. They have a nine-month program. Less than $15,000, George. Wow. And they're starting at 75000 Some are making 100000 coming out. It's a trade school. And it's less than a quarter of the time, which means you have income coming in you nine months your later, way through. potentially. That's right. Then let's look at the trades. As you mentioned, welders, electricians, plumbers, carpenters. The field is wide open. They are desperate for people who can come in and work. And uh, you and I were at a conference recently where uh, Malcolm Gladwell, on the stage at our Entree Leadership Summit, said that he was talking to a well-known professor uh, at an Ivy League school, and he said, what would you tell your kids about their future? They're his young kids. He said, I'd tell them to get into trades. Mm, that's powerful. This is an Ivy Leaguer, you know, an elitist. And uh, if you will, for people like to make fun of The point sure. is, is he's even saying the value's not there. Yeah, and so uh, all that to say, this is we have this conversation because, George, so many people make bad financial decisions under the guise of, well, I had to do it. Well, we've let the degree dictate what job happens versus letting the job dictate whether or not we even need a degree. There it is. We've got to make that change. And if you want to learn more about this, we explore it in our documentary called Borrowed Future. It's completely free on YouTube. There's also a podcast series I hosted around the same topic, and it will open your eyes. Watch it with your kids yep. and start the conversation now. Also, we have a great resource at our website, RamseySolutions.com, called Debt Free Degree. It's a great book, easy read. You can go to college without the debt, and we want you to.